It's time for the United Nations to reset its response to war. That's the view of former public protector Tulima Donzela, who has spoken out on Russia's invasion of Ukraine. She says the invasion must be stopped before there's more human suffering and years of aftermath trauma. Ukraine's state uh, emergency service has confirmed that Kharkiv's regional police department and universities were targeted this morning. The former public protector and now chair in social justice at Stellenbosch University joins us now live. Prof. Tulima Tonsela, very good afternoon to you. The humanitarian crisis is very much looming large now when you look at the numbers that are coming out of various agencies, including United Nations itself, about how many people have now fled Ukraine, how many people are dying, including civilians and children. Uh, absolutely. It's, my heart goes out to the people of the Ukraine and all who are going to be affected by the invasion of the Ukraine. And anyway, the invasion of Ukraine is going to affect me and you as well because the world is interconnected and the value chains are interconnected and we, we will all feel it. My suggestion is that the peace agreement that led to the formation of the United Nations and which is reflected in the Universal Charter of 1945 is not holding. So it's time to get back to the table to talk to how do we manage war and peace. But until then, this invasion must be stopped because just the human suffering is uncalled for. But also just invading another country is not an answer, whatever your concerns may be. Yeah, and you make a point in those comments which really stood out for me, that to say you are div invading another territory because you are protecting your own security cannot be ac an acceptable reason in terms of international law. No, absolutely. This is in, 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 in breach of international law. If a country has problems with another country, the agreements in, in international law require that, firstly, you need to enter into negotiations with the country that you're having difficulties with. And if this matter is giving you problems, then take it to the United Nations. The weird thing is that Russia is currently the chair of the UN Security Council. So therefore, it cannot say that it was blocked from access. It's a country that could have tabled this matter and say, this is the problem that we have. How do we resolve it through multilateral agreements? Because at the end of the day, it impacts uh, the whole world. Yeah, and I mean, multilateralism has been under pressure for some time. I mean, I've discussed this uh, recently on, on, on my program, I think it was sometime last year, when you look at how South Africa has embraced multilateralism. But uh, unilateralism is rearing its head now and again in America, for example, uh, under Donald Trump in particular, was, was criticized for going unilateral on many things, and Russia is doing, is doing the same. How do you think uh, multilateralism c can win the day going forward? when you're looking at what is happening now, and Russia being the chair of the UN Security Council vetoed the resolution against this invasion? Multilateralism will work if we do a reset, because as you've indicated, Dan, there's been violations of international law by various countries before, not at this level, but at some level, the way violations of international law by countries resorting to self-harm. For example, the invasion of Iraq was in violation of international law. So we're not suggesting it's never happened before. We're just saying it must stop. Uh, but what has happened has never been seen before. This open um, invasion of a country declaration, this is... Uh, the kind of stuff that we've only seen pre-Second World War. Um, so the only way this could hold is if the United Nations comes together. And I don't think the UN Peace Security Council is the only place. I think just the country, just the way they did, uh, for example, uh, in the PC of, uh, in the Treaty of Versailles in 1919, 
which of course didn't hold well enough, hence uh, the second um, uh, agreement that became the universal, uh, the, the UN Charter. So I think they need to come back. All of the countries need to meet urgently, and I mean urgently, to to deal with this matter and before it escalates into a third world war. And But yeah. before more people suffer, because people don't suffer only in the war, people also suffer in the aftermath. People will tell you what happened to life in general after the second world war. The few older persons that are still alive will tell you that the world doesn't want to see that. Yeah, and, and I guess in, in, the re, in renewing or resetting, rather, that's the word you've used, resetting the, the, the global peace compact under the United Nations, the, the, the certain rules of the game w would have to change. For example, I know that South Africa for many years has been arguing that the Security Council of the UN, the way it's like a special club of a few nations, is not sustainable going forward. So if you're going to be resetting, I guess, uh, Prof, the, the UN will have to look at, at, at every aspect aspect, not just how do you then deal with acts of unilateralism that put at risk our global peace and security? No, absolutely. The first one would be the veto. We know, for example, that recently uh, Ukraine tried to sponsor a resolution that were to make sure that if a country is involved in the aggression or has uh, some conflict of interest, it should not be allowed to vote or even to exercise the veto. So that's one of the things that needs to be changed because you can't be a judge in your own cause. The second thing is the UN, you will recall, Dan, was formed at the time when many countries were still colonized. Most of Africa was still colonized. And this UN Peace Security Council, having only a few members with veto powers, was before, again, we were recognized as human beings. And we need a UN that is structured in such a way that it's recognized that there are humans that live in continents such as Africa, and their rights to determine what happens to us as a human collective are no less important than the rights of those that previously colonized others. Yeah, what role could a country like South Africa now, I mean, we are now a democratic country, you quite right, and fellow African countries who are all, for example, engaged together now and again under the umbrella of the African Union. As an, as an example, Prof, what could they be doing to steer this conversation in that direction that you are proposing of a reset United Nations, a reset multilateral global engagement? One action that South Africa could take would be, of course, to petition the United Nations to have a General Assembly meeting because it is not currently a member of the UN Security Council because the seats that we have as a continent are rotational and impermanent at this day. Africa could also meet as a continent to take a, a continental position on what does it think about Russia's invasion of the Ukraine and take a continental decision to appeal to Russia, firstly to have a ceasefire whilst there is these negotiations between Russia and, and Ukraine. And then as Africa then collectively participate in the United Nations, firstly in getting an interim solution, because we really do need an interim solution, and secondly to get a permanent solution. Again, another reason why the, the AU needs to meet is the fact that racism has reared its ugly head in this particular conflict. We hear here and there that African students and just African-looking people are being refused access to some of the neighboring countries, including Poland, or even when they're not refused, they're given more trouble in, in trying to access help. So that should also be part of re-discussing um, the issue of racism and taking as, as aggressive action on racism as we are doing on issues of gender and climate change.
Yeah, I guess, I mean, it's not enough uh, for the AU as they have done just to issue a statement like many other people. You are suggesting they need to take action, meet and deal with all the various aspects of this, uh, of this, uh, of this conflict, including the resetting of a global uh, peace, peace compact. What about uh, citizens? I know you've got views like you've had and you've expressed them, Prof. Matonsela, for example, about active citizenship when it comes to matters like corruption, for example. But in this matter of global peace, what would you say would be the roles of, of, of citizens, like ordinary citizens like you and me? Well, citizens in other countries are demonstrating going to the Russian embassy in their country and petitioning Russia to stop um, the aggression. As South African citizens, we need not demonstrate because demonstrations in our country don't always end well but we could write to our government and to the Russian government to request an, an end to this. Okay. We the could also boycott Russian. We can also boycott Russian products. So you, you said as citizens we could boycott Russian products uh, 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 as a way of showing our, our displeasure uh, against the uh, invasion of Ukraine. Yes, it doesn't matter that we're part of BRICS, but Russia, by invading Ukraine, whatever its reasons may be, has endangered the entire world. Because as long as there's injustice somewhere, there cannot be sustainable peace anywhere. And they still say, I think it was Martin Luther King who said, justice, injustice anywhere is a threat to peace everywhere. Okay, Prof. Matonsela, I know I didn't get in touch with you to ask you about this, but as we conclude, just one comment, your thoughts, I don't know what you thought about when part three of the state capture of the inquiry report came out, and it's mainly on Busasa. I know that your terms of reference originally in your state of capture uh, report as the former public protector, you were focusing on the Gupta family and the relationship with how the state was captured uh, through the former president, Jacob Zuma. But just your thoughts as, as more and more stuff is coming out. What what did you think yesterday when the report was issued and what are you thinking right now as there's more commentary around it and more details being shared publicly? Well, again, I, I, it's not my place to comment on the content and process other than to thank Justice Zondo for yet another product. We do think, again, why we have Wusasa um, is partly because of the expanded terms of reference as a uh, Acting Chief Justice said, much as it has caused us very deeply this uh, kitchen sink approach, it has its merits in that what seems to have happened according to this report through Busasa cost us dearly because every time people are bribed to make things happen for a contractor, we pay as citizens because they don't have their interest they just inflate the pricing. Thank you very much. That's the chair in social justice at Stellenbosch University and former public protector Tulima Donsela sharing us uh, her views about what should happen globally uh, in terms of ensuring uh, peace.